I'm not even kidding when I say this. I have literally found every single JavaScript learning resource that exists out there. If you don't believe me, I'm telling you everything that is even slightly relevant, that is like considered reasonable, is in this video. I hope you guys enjoy this one because it took me a while to make. Let's get into it. I'm going to be ranking every single tier from beginner to advanced, and I'm going to be giving it a rating on top of that as well. So hopefully you guys will find that useful. Slow learning, 6 out of 10. This one is great for absolute beginners. The only issue with it is that you might grow up pretty quickly compared to some of the other stuff in this video. However, if you don't know anything about JavaScript, this one is a pretty solid resource to start with. Code Academy, 7.5 out of 10. This one is a little more interactive. It's a little more polished than Soul Learning. And personally, it's one of the more polished ones out there in general. However, if you don't pay for the subscription, it's quite basic in resource learning. Free Code Camp, 9 out of 10. This one is extremely comprehensive. It goes from the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all the way to end goal of getting hired. And there's a lot of projects sprinkled in between to keep the retention and make sure you're learning in the process. It's not as polished as some of the other two on the list, but because it is free, I give it a 9 out of 10. Anyone who wants to get into coding and doesn't have the money to pay for it is a great resource to start with. Scrimba, 8.5 out of 10. This one is highly interactive and also beginner friendly. It also has some more advanced features later, but I prefer the beginner ones. That's why I put it at the beginning of the list. This one is also a great option if you want to get into JavaScript. Frontend Mentor, 7 out of 10. This one is more hands-on UI projects. You're going to need a little bit of a basic JavaScript knowledge to get into this. But if you pick one of the other resources on this list and you want to hop on or hop onto something else after that, this one is a solid option. YouTube, 8 out of 10. YouTube is a little controversial because it can be really useful or it can be really bad. It depends on how you the viewer are treating it. If you're taking YouTube as a, trying to learn from it, you're trying to actually learn syntax from YouTube, you're probably not going to do very well. Watching like long three hour tutorials is really not a great idea to actually learn anything. However, if you're watching something like Fireship or my channel, so answer, and you're trying to learn how to learn or kind of just understand how coding concepts work in general, then YouTube can be extremely useful as long as you're also coding at the same time. Coding is a hands-on thing. It's something that you can watch. So as long as you're coding and also watching YouTube, it can be a great resource to learn from. TikTok and Instagram Reels. I hate to say it, but it's not really good. It's three out of 10. You might get some micro tips. You might figure out something, but you're not going to have any deep learning. You're not really going to master anything from TikTok or Instagram Reels. So I wouldn't recommend this as a form of learning. If you happen to be getting it in your Reels, that's a different story. But if you're trying to learn off Instagram Reels, which I don't think anyone is, but if you are trying to, it's not going to be a good story for you. Podcasts, 4 out of 10. This is probably an advanced version of Reels, whereas you're still only listening to code, which doesn't really work out in the long run. It's a lot of passive learning, and coding is a hands-on thing. However, it's probably going to be better than Reels, because you're going to get probably in-depth explanations and concepts. So if you really just love JavaScript, and you're out like on a run or something, or you're in the car, and you want to listen to podcasts, uh, it could work. JavaScript.info, 9 out of 10. This one is a really, really solid resource for beginners to start into JavaScript. It goes from the very basics of JavaScript all the way to some advanced concepts. And it's really just focused on JavaScript alone. It doesn't really touch anything else. This one is a really solid option if you want to get into JavaScript and have just one entire comprehensive run through of the entire language. Gamify Learning, 6 out of 10. This one is really good for complete beginners, but it's not very in-depth, partially because this is targeted to like middle school kids. So if you really struggle with learning JavaScript through traditional methods, you could try this. However, it's not going to take you too far. Bootcamps, 7 out of 10. This one is effective if you have the money and the time to spend on them, but the quality can vary quite significantly. Some bootcamps are really solid, and some others are questionable. If you want to go down this route, it's a viable option. However, if you're trying to get a job using just the bootcamp as credibility, it's not going to look too good compared to like a CS degree. All right, that was the beginner list. Now onto the intermediate list. The Odin Project, 8.5 out of 10. This one is a really solid option for learning, and it's a lot more comprehensive than its uh, competitor or the one it's often compared to, which is Free Code Camp. I put this into intermediate because it's going to push you into some more in-depth topics, but it's a very viable option to get to like an intermediate plus level. AI Assistance, strictly for learning. This is a 10 out of 10, arguably, in my opinion, one of the best tools out there in 2025 to learn coding. It will help you with any concept you could think of almost instantly. It's basically Google, Stack Overflow, and anything else all bundled into one thing. It's extremely comprehensive. 
and it'll give you assistance on any project or problem you have. You can bug fix. It's really good. It's really solid. If you want to use AI, I think it's an excellent option as long as it's not writing the code for you. Cursor is the best coding AI at the moment if you're trying to get it to write code for you. However, if you're trying to learn, I would recommend ChatGPT. I prefer it because it's more conversational and it's more direct and can give you more guidance in terms of like trying to teach you like an older mentor. JS30, 8.5 out of 10. This is essentially 30 JavaScript projects and it's really good from bridging to beginner to intermediate. If you're trying to get some projects under your belt and you don't want to learn syntax alone, this is a great tool to learn that. Code Wars, 8 out of 10. This is like a gamified version of JavaScript but for more intermediate level. It could do a lot of syntax fluency and thinking. If you're into that stuff, or you like that stuff, this could be a good option for you. If you're more in depth and just want to learn actual JavaScript, this might not be the greatest one. Leak code, 7.5 out of 10. I get it, leak code isn't exactly the best for JavaScript alone, but if you're trying to get like a overarching fundamentals and algorithmic skill and problem solving, this is a good one to just knock out because you know, you're know gonna have to use it probably for interviews and stuff. And you might need to just have some leak code kind of knowledge and stuff. So that when you actually apply for a job, you have an idea of what you're doing on the interviews. Hacker rank, seven out of 10. This is similar to leak code, but it's more beginner friendly has some easier problems to start with. If you're struggling on leak code from the beginner level and you want to do something easier, you can start on hacker rank, grind through some of these, and then jump to leak code after if you want to. Exorcism, eight out of 10. These have some well-structured challenges and you can get mentor feedback. I've heard it's pretty comprehensive, but there's a little bit of a, a lot of text you have to click through, partly because I heard it's free and they're trying to stay free. So because of that, you'll have to deal with that. But for what it does, it's pretty solid, eight out of 10. Front end masters, nine out of 10. There are industry level instructors in this thing, as well as a lot of practical focus on stuff that actually matters. It's really good if you already have some basic knowledge of JavaScript. And from what I'm aware, a lot of people recommend this as the only paid one that's worth paying for. So if you wanna pay for something and you trust this, front end masters is a good option. Exploringjs.com. In theory, the value is eight out of 10 because you're gonna get some deep, precise explanations and it's gonna focus more on the why stuff instead of how but it is a book. I really hate books. So if you don't want to read stuff, this might not be for you. I know some developers do read books though. So if you do like that, this is a great option. Reddit, six out of 10. This is really good for discovering tools, trends, and solutions that are current. Stuff that is happening right now and not happening like five or 10 years ago. But the quality is questionable. You're gonna get a lot of opinionated stuff. And you know some developers who are newer might give you wrong information, kind of like Stack Overflow. So be careful when you go into this. Stack Overflow, six out of 10. This is probably one of the biggest coding resources out there for finding solutions online, but it can be over overwhelming, can be frustrating. And some of the people on Stack Overflow are quite not great to listen to. So it's an all right resource. However, AI essentially is just Stack Overflow, but refined. And there's also an issue of running into code on Stack Overflow that just is terrible. So keep that in mind. Discord, 6.5 out of 10. If you're joining a really solid Discord like the Odin Projects Discord, you can get some pretty good resources and access to the community that can give you some guidance if you ask some questions. But it does depend heavily on which group you join. The quality is going to be different. And you know, you're know you relying on actual people, not like solid sources. So you have to be careful with that. Open source contribution, 9.5 out of 10. This is probably one of the best ways at an intermediate level to get better JavaScript. You're going to get immersive real world practice, but the problem is that it has a quite a steep learning curve and you're essentially gonna get flamed for your code by other people on GitHub. Let's keep that in mind. It's pretty hard to get into, but once you do, you can really accelerate your learning on JavaScript. And also it looks really good to employers if you're contributing to open source. Meetups and hackathons, seven out of 10. This is really only great for networking. It's not as structured as any like learning resource, but you could walk away with some more in-depth experience in more variable practice and problems. So it's a good option. All right, that was intermediate. On to the final section, the advanced section. This is for mastering JavaScript. So if this is something you wanna do, this section is for you. ECMA script specification, eight out of 10. This is the deepest source of truth in JavaScript. It's essentially the most in-depth thing you will find online, but it's really hard to digest unless you already know JS inside out. I try to read it, it reads terribly, it's so hard to kind of figure out what's going on in it. And even I, who knows JavaScript pretty well, struggled on this. So keep this in mind, unless you really, really want to master JavaScript, this one is extremely hard to get into. 
but it's very advanced. It's probably the most advanced one in this list. Let's keep that in mind. Framework docs, nine out of 10. This is a really good option if you wanna take your JavaScript knowledge and actually use it in something more modern tooling. React, Vue, or other frameworks are excellent at teaching you JavaScript modern tooling because they use the most modern stuff and kind of incorporate stuff like ES6 that other stuff might not really do well. If you want to master your JavaScript and pick up a framework at the same time, this is a solid option. MDN Web Docs 9.5 out of 10. This is the gold standard for JavaScript documentation. It has a lot of resources that is really well structured. Even though EACMA, whatever it was, is more structured, it's more advanced. This is basically like a readable version of that. It's a really solid option. Technically, you could use this as a beginner as well, but I think it really shines in the advanced stages when you're trying to master JavaScript. Eloquent JavaScript, its value is nine out of 10. You're gonna get some really advanced concepts explained very clearly. You're gonna have some challenging exercises as well. But as I said earlier in this video, one of the things I hate about coding is trying to read books or documentation. So if you don't wanna read a giant textbook, this might not be for you, but technically value wise, it is nine out of 10 for what it delivers. You don't know JavaScript yet, 9.5 out of 10. This has a really good deep dive into language internals and it will transform your understanding of JavaScript. It is really solid value wise. It is probably one of the best books you could read on JavaScript, but notice how I said book, it is a book. So if you don't like to read books, this might not be for you. If you do like to read books, probably one of the best ones out there. Advent of code, eight out of 10. This is a really fun one. It's just kind of an event one where you get a lot of algorithmic problem solving under time constraints. Essentially just kind of like a seasonal thing. It's like a fun little, you know, something you can do on the side when you want to have fun with your coding knowledge. It kind of solves some problems to get better at coding at the same time. If that's something you like, if you really enjoy some seasonal kind of event, this could be for you. Newsletters and blogs, five out of 10. This is great for staying up to date on like advanced modern JavaScript tooling. But if you're trying to learn off this, you're probably not gonna to get too far. You're just reading. And like I said, coding is a hands-on thing, not something you can just ingest from hearing it. College, a CS degree specifically, eight out of 10. This is gonna give you some of the most in-depth experience or knowledge you could find anywhere. It's gonna have a slow and structured routine, but it is very slow. It's very expensive. So that's a trade-off you have to consider. If you're willing to go into a lot of debt, you really take your time and learn a lot of other stuff that might not be useful forward your career. This is a solid option, but it's not for everyone. Building real projects, 10 out of 10. Arguably one of the best ways to learn anything in coding. You're gonna hit a lot of real world problems that you will actually encounter in a job, and you're gonna actually have results that speak for themselves. This is probably one of the best ways to do anything in coding. So if you're gonna build a real project, I promise you, you will learn the best this way for advanced. If you're truly trying to master JavaScript, this is probably the only way to really become one of the best. All right, guys, that was every single JavaScript learning resource. If you want someone to guide you through that or want some private mentorship on top of that, I have an online community for new web developers. Like I said, it's more like private mentorship. If you're interested in that, there's a link in the description. You can find out and learn more about that.